Hello, friend. Hello, friend. That's lame. Maybe I should give you a name. Mr. Robot stars the unreliable narrator of unreliable narrators, Elliot Alderson. You're not buying any of this either. Are you? He hacks everyone around him, bringing down assholes and trying to protect people that are sad or lonely. Most of the individuals he investigates are awful and it seems like he's looking for a connection but constantly being let down. Amazingly enough, even though he's a level 99 hacker, he manages to remain likable and relatable throughout the show. In episode 1, the slightly confrontational Mr. Robot invites him to join his virtuous hacker group, F Society, and Elliot likes him right off the bat. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Robot's plan is to obliterate E Corp, the largest conglomerate in the world, and get rid of everyone's debts. Mr. Alderson is down for this because his father died working for E Corp and he hates him so much he mentally rebranded them Evil Corp. It's very important to note that we are in Elliot's head and we mostly see things from his perspective. He seems to like us quite a bit. At one point he talks about building a perfect utopia with all of his friends and says that we'd be there. Plenty of programs break the fourth wall but Robot is peculiar in how much Mr. Alderson interacts with the viewer. He asks us to look for things, begs us for help, and I was shook when he started yelling at me for not telling him about a plot twist. The earliest clue that something isn't quite right in Mr. Alderson's universe is the one day off theory, which isn't really a theory. Every date in Robot World is actually actually off by one day, and there's some strange fuckery going on with time in general. You'll also be happy to know that 9-11 did not occur in Elliot's world, so the people of Mr. Robot get to lead long and happy lives. A virtuous hacker group taking down an evil corporation is a vanilla setup, so there's also the Dark Army, a much more malicious hacker group, which is kind of like a cult. Remember the cause. Dark Army will work with you, kill you, or protect you, all depending on what their mysterious leader White Rose wants at the time. Then there's my favorite character, the wild card, Tyrell Wellick. I like him because he's always going around doing crazy shit and much like myself, cares about Elliot. People say he's the Mr. Robot version of Patrick Bateman, and it's an easy comparison, especially since the show has music from Huey Lewis in the news. I also feel obligated to mention Angela. She's my least favorite in the main cast, but she's Elliot's friend, so I gotta be nice. She still says some stupid shit, though. Even if I'm losing, let me lose. To be fair, Angela's plotline does get better later on. People are going to die! No, they're going to be fine! Last character I want to mention is the CEO of Evil Corp, Philip Price, purely because he's a badass. It's not that I'm out of moves. It's that you're not worth one. One of many fantastic things about Mr. Robot is that most of the doodads and doohickeys that make it great are present in the very first episode. In my opinion, the fast-paced story, dialogue, music cues, and cinematography all come together to make it the best pilot of all time. Let's talk about the men in black you've been seeing. Each episode in season one is a satisfying gobble, and then you get a hint on what the next satisfying gobble will be. In fact, season one is so fast-paced, it led people to think that they jumped the shark and too much had happened. In between the happenings, there are also little moments of normalcy, humor, and happiness that make the stuff in later seasons hit much harder. Another thing, Season 1 does successfully is set up both sides of the situation. If Elliot takes down Evil Corp, he will have avenged his father and freed Angela along with the entire world from their debts. However, Elliot's boss at Allsave is Gideon. Allsave provides cybersecurity for Evil Corp. If Evil Corp gets taken down from a cyber attack, Allsave will go under and Bossman will lose everything. So it's an interesting moment when Elliot looks into him. Have I told you what I saw when I hacked Gideon? When I peeked into his secrets? I saw a good, honest man. In Mr. Robot, our friends lose most of the time and there are no perfect victories. You should also know that on this show, the craziest theories are the ones that turn out to be true. Moving on, one may think that Robot's plan is almost word for word from Fight Club, and it is, but the program makes no attempt to hide that influence and they even play a piano cover of Where Is My Mind. I also gotta say that despite his faults, Mr. Robot is a really fun character. Come on, never thought about it, getting with one of your patients. That would cross some ethical boundaries for me. Sucks for you. That's enough for S1. In season two, the FBI contemplates Operation Berenstain and the Dark Army goes sicko mode. Whereas the opening season had some bizarre shit but stayed fairly grounded, S2 slows down the pace and ratchets up the strangeness. This is where all the time travel and parallel universe theories started, so you're probably gonna get bombarded with videos that are now outdated, and I'm sorry about that. Season two also begins Mr. Robot's wonderful tradition of introducing awesome new characters each go around. First is the lonely lollipop detective, Dom DePiro, a competent investigator who works hard on the clock and diddles her skittle off it. Then there's Leon, played by Joey Badass, a respectable young man just trying to understand Seinfeld. Installment two also features a throwback sequence with a laugh track and it's one of the most bizarre things I've had the pleasure of watching live. <laughs> Not only that, but the network that airs the show in the USA, called USA, did throwback commercials to maintain the aesthetic. While we're discussing meta shit, there's also an E Corp subreddit where employees of Evil Corp can hang out and talk about their day. My boy Samar made an informative poll asking where the hottest girls are. He also made one that's more my speed asking about the best bathrooms. The show takes place in 2015, so the posts were written to correspond with the events of the episode, then Reddit admins changed the timestamp so it looks like they were written four years ago. Makes you wonder what else they're changing. Season one ended with several inquiries like, what happened the night of May 9th? Where the fuck is Tyrell? And what is White Rose's plan? I promise all these questions will be answered 
eventually. But S2 is more about character development than it is about plot points, which is partially why I was blindsided by S3. This may seem a tad dramatic, but season three is fast paced and horrific. I don't know if I can say it. There are multiple moments that feel like a horror movie complete with a Silence of the Lambs type sequence. Most of the characters have mental breakdowns because they just can't deal with the trauma anymore. Some recover. Some do not. Even those that do not break down get their shit pushed in, like when Philip pretty much calls Mr. Robot a bitch. Why don't you tell me how I should be thinking? Like a leader. I am a leader. And where are your followers? In 2014, True Detective did a neat little single that was made to look like one shot, and I thought it was awesome. But now it's the current year, and in episode 5, Mr. Show Off Sam Ismail has done a 40 minute episode long one shot sequence, with the last 20 minutes being a nightmarish hellscape. And to aid in the aesthetic once again, the network held commercials, so shout out to them for being bros. Season 3 also marks the interest of my favorite side character, Dark Army operative Irving. If you're seeing me, that means you boys fucked up. He's got the clean-up competency of Mike with the attitude of slipping Jimmy, and I hear he's got a book coming out. Now let's get into the game-changing, episode 6. We need to let today happen. The super simplified, succinct summary is that the Dark Army and Mr. Robot are going to commit a terrorist act to try to finish off Evil Corp, with Elliot desperately trying to talk Mr. Robot out of it. Their conflicting ideologies have always been a major point of the show, and this is the ultimate sad culmination of that. It basically boils down to Elliot refuses to kill people, and Mr. Robot is fine with killing if it's necessary. However, he does care about Elliot and the members of a society, as well as most of the the innocent bystanders of the world. The episode is mainly a 1v1 between Elliot and Mr. Robot, but it feels like a monumental battle since every major character plays a part. That's made more intense by the fact that most of the people on opposite sides care about each other, so there's a lot of emotional weight. I can't say anything else about it without spoiling something, but it's my favorite episode of the series and my favorite episode of anything ever. In fact, I'd say 5, 6, and 7 are a trifecta of perfectly made television. The season 3 finale is written with the emotional heft of a series finale, and it's really, really, really satisfying. Overall, it's my favorite season of television. Moving on, I would say the right word to describe season four is heartbreaking. It's set at Christmas time and it has that special kind of loneliness that only seems to exist around the holidays. There's one episode that I will never rewatch because I don't want to feel that way ever again. It's got a perfect 10 on IMDb and is currently the second highest rated television episode of all time, right below Attack on Titan, right above Breaking Bad, and it deserves it. Still not going to watch it again though. But the main reason I love season four is because it had me conflicted. I care about Elliot, I want him to be happy, but... At the same time, White Rose's plan sounds pretty cool. Not only that, but at this point, White Rose has been fleshed out so much I empathize with their position. Similar to Light Yagami, I don't agree with their methods or like the satisfaction they take in killing people, but the end goal is good. Moreover, I think whether a show watcher agrees with Elliot's or White Rose's philosophy depends on their own worldview, which is awesome. It's also good to see a great live action antagonist with a batshit insane plan. My favorite TV villain up until now is Gus Fring, and all he wanted to do was take out the cartel and sell drugs. Moving away from that, there's a heist episode where only two lines of dialogue are spoken, one at the beginning and one at the end. As I mentioned in another video, the cinematography throughout the whole series is great, but season four is my favorite shot where it looks like Mr. Robot is walking both backwards and forwards through some sort of purgatory looking location. I like it both because it looks fucking sweet and it's a great microcosm for F society. Episode 10 is a nice little self-contained story and extremely well written, but let's talk about the season four twist. Sam already knew what the ending would be when he started the series, and because of that level of planning, you get reveals in season four that recontextualize scenes in all the other seasons. Other shows have twists obviously, but Mr. Robot is unique in the sense that these scenes were clearly written with a twist from season four in mind. In fact, some scenes make a lot more sense after the reveals that happened years later, and I've never seen that in a TV show before. It's without a doubt some of the craziest shit you will ever see, with the biggest plot twist taking place in the very last episode. There's been a little bit of fighting amongst the community as to whether the finale was satisfying or not. All I can tell you is that I was satisfied, and I think it answered everything it needed to. It reminds me of True Detective in the sense that all the main questions were answered, but the Yellow King and other background stuff was left by the wayside. My main criticism of the series would be that I wanted more Tyrell. How do you not? Blow your brains out being married to him. Also, one of the sudden plot developments in season one always gets critiqued for being obvious, but I feel like the show expects you to figure it out, which is why Elliot yells at you for not telling him. However, something in season two is played as a more genuine twist, and the internet figured it out way before the official reveal, so that's the one that I don't like. The dialogue throughout the show is exactly what it needed to be, and I didn't feel any tonal problems, but nothing's perfect, and these two lines reminded me I was watching a TV show. He turned the gun on himself. He erased his history. Going back to positives, another thing I love about the show is that everyone gets a humanizing moment. Whether it be the Dark Army soldiers talking about the ladies, or the security guy making fun of Elliot because he hasn't seen JFK. Sure, I gotta be honest, that's embarrassing. I focus a lot on the darkness of Mr. Robot because that's what appeals to me, but at times it's also a very fun show. This isn't burn notice. Characters like you are not welcome here. There's tons of Back to the Future references, the Shining Shot, and they open up one episode with a Knight Rider theme. It's not a huge deal, but it's also nice that the opening is different every episode, and it gives the show a lot of opportunities to jump around. 
in time. There's plenty of other strange shit, weird characters, and bizarre moments that we could talk about, but I'd like to leave some to the imagination. In closing, Mr. Robot is a horrifying, heartbreaking, funny, bizarre, unique show that will blow your mind into the very last second, and that's why it's my favorite. If you ever go into a comment section on a robot clip, you'll see people comparing it to Breaking Bad, probably saying it's better or the best show since. It's one of those choices where you're right either way. However, Mr. Robot is more trippy, more psychological, and has more twist, which is why I like it more. Also, the hacking is fun to watch and really realistic. I tested out of one computer science class in college, so I'd consider myself something of an expert on the subject. And one last thing, shout out to Keith David for his performance as Elliot's depressed fish. I'm exhausted with this world. The first three seasons are available on Amazon Prime, and I'm sure you'll find somebody to get your hands on season four, like purchasing the DVD at your local blockbuster. Well, it's a new decade now, which I'm sure will have retarded people, stupid trends, bad Netflix shows, more retarded people, and we'll be here to make fun of all of it. Exciting time in the world right now. Exciting time. Take us away, Sam. Fuck her and her fetus corpse.